We follow where the evidence goes. And Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Bi lisanin Arabiyyin mubin." This book is in Arabic, clear Arabic speech. So if you have a theory about how it's organized, then the theory itself has to be very what? Clear. So I was going to talk to you a little bit about Surah An-Naba. Surah An-Naba is the beginning of 30th Juz. Most people hear it, at least if they haven't memorized it, they hear it recited all the time. And just to make the subject easy for you, just so you can read this yourself when you go home, I'm going to break it up for you. Surah An-Naba is broken up into seven parts. Surah An-Naba is broken up into seven parts, okay? Now here's how it works. There, the first part, and the third part, and the fifth part, and the seventh, seventh part. One, three, five, and seven. All of them have to do with Yawm Al-Qiyamah, the day of resurrection. Which parts have to do with Yawm Al-Qiyamah again? One, three, five, and seven. Now listen. عَمَّا يَتَسَاءَلُونَ عَنِ النَّبَأِ الْعَظِيمِ أَلَّذِي هُمْ فِيهِ يَخْتَلِفُونَ كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ ثُمَّ كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ That's the first section. What are they asking about? About the great event? You know, the one that they disagree about, they're gonna find out very soon. No, no, they'll find out very soon. What event, are they t what, what event is Allah talking about? The Day of Judgment. That's section one. Now look at section three. Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّ يَوْمَ الْفَصْلِ كَانَ مِيقَاتًا يَوْمَ يُنْفَخُ فِي الصُّورِ فَتَأْتُونَ أَفْوَاجًا وَفُتِحَتِ السَّمَاءُ فَكَانَتْ أَبْوَابًا وَسُيِّرَتِ الْجِبَالُ فَكَانَتْ سَرَابًا the day of, you know, the day of separation has already, is a time that's already set. The day when the trumpet will be blown into and all of you will come in large armies and the sky will be opened up, turned into doors and the mountains shall start sailing and look like a mirage. You won't even believe your eyes. What day is this? Judgment day. What section did I just read to you? Three. So, so one is about judgment day, three is about judgment day. Okay, now I'll read a little bit of five, okay? إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا لَا يَرْجُونَ حِسَابًا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا كِذَّابًا وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ أَحْصَيْنَاهُ كِتَابًا فَذُوقُوا فَلَنْ نَزِيدَكُمْ إِلَّا عَذَابًا Those people didn't expect that the accounting will ever happen. They didn't hope for the accounting to have ever happen. And they used to lie about our ayat. And we have recorded everything in a book. Now taste the punishment. When is the accounting going to happen? When is the book that has all, everything recorded, when is that going to be shown? Day of Judgment. What section did I just read to you? Five. Okay, now look. Last section. لا رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما الرحمن لا يملكون منه خطابا يوم يقوم الروح والملائكة صفا لا يتكلمون إلا من أذن له الرحمن وقال صوابا ذلك اليوم الحق فمن شاء اتخذ إلى ربه مآبا إن أنذرناكم عذابا قريبا يوم ينظر المرء ما قدمت يداه ويقول الكافر يا ليتني كنت ترابا This is the final section. Read some of the translation for you. The master of the skies and the earth and whatever is, lies between them, the, the excessively merciful, they are not going to be able to speak, they won't have the power to speak a word. Which day is no creation able to speak? Day of judgment. The day on which ru the ruh, meaning Jibreel alayhi salam, and all the angels stand in rows, none shall speak except the one that Ar-Rahman gives permission to, and he shall speak the upright thing, meaning the Rasul sallallahu alayhi is going to be given permission to speak on judgment day. That is the ultimately true day. That is the, 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 the real day. Then whoever wants can find their way back to their master. We are warning you of a painful, pun of, a, of a nearby punishment. The day on which a person will look at everything their hands have put forward and the disbeliever will say, if only I was turned into dust. This is all a scene of what? Judgment day. So now let's review back. One, three, five, seven. All of them are about what? Judgment Day. Now before I go any further, which sections did I skip on purpose? 246. Two, we'll get to them in a second. But let's talk a little bit more about 1, 3, 5, and 7. In section 1, I briefly translated it for you. They question Judgment Day. What are they asking each other about? They're disagreeing with each other. They're sarcastically asking each other questions. You think it's really going to happen? Come on. We're not, there's not going to be a judgment day. They're joking around and talking about it. And Allah is threatening them and saying, Kalla sayalamun, thumma kalla sayalamun. They'll find out soon enough. Oh no, no, they're going to find out all right. You, you hear that? So in the first section, they're talking nonsense. What happens in the last section? Nobody can talk. Everybody's quiet. And the only one who speaks says the right thing. In the first section, Allah said, soon they will find out. In the last section, He said, عذاب قريبا, punishment that is very nearby. Nearby. And by the way, when they were making jokes about it, they weren't taking it seriously. 
But by the end, in the seventh section, this Allah says, you know, يَوْمَ الْمَرْءُ مَا قَدَّمَتْ يَدَى وَيَقُولُ الْكَافِرِ يَا لَيْتَنِي كُنْتُ تُرَابًا The same guy who was making fun in the first section is now saying, if I could just be turned into dust now. Okay, I get it, it's real. I don't want to deal with this. What I'm trying to tell you is the first section is actually completed by the seventh section. One and seven work with each other. The second section, or the third section that I read to you, was Allah Azza wa Jal said that the day of separation will come, the sky will be opened up, the mountains are gonna move, the earth is gonna get laid out. In other words, the universe is shifting. But it doesn't say why is it shifting. It just says that it's shifting. It says the sky is being opened up, the mountains are moving out of place, right? Everything's getting messed up in the world, but you don't know why. Well, guess which section gives the answer why? Section 5. The fifth section. And what do you find in the fifth section? In the fifth section you find these people thought that they're not going to be held to trial. They thought that they can just lie about our ayat. We recorded everything. Because once the earth, when the, when the mountains are moved and the earth is turned into a field, when the sky is opened up and the legions of angels descend, وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ وَالْمَلَكُ صَفًّا صفا, When that happens, then the scrolls are laid out of deeds. And everybody gets to see, you needed all this space for humanity to stand up again to trial and for all of their deeds to be judged. So three is answered by what? Five. It's amazing. That you don't, like, when you're just reading it, you don't realize that there's a symmetry in place. One, three, five, and seven. Now what was left? Two, four, and six. Now let's talk about two, four, and six. Section two is about the world that you can see around you. Number two is about the world as it is right now. So listen. أَلَمْ نَجْعَلِ الْأَرْضَ مِهَادًا وَالْجِبَالَ أَوْتَادًا وَخَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ سُبَاتًا وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ لِبَاسًا وَجَعَلْنَا النَّهَارَ مَعَاشًا وَبَنَيْنَا فَوْقَكُمْ سَبْعًا شِدَادًا وَجَعَلْنَا سِرَاجًا وَحَاجًا This is section 2. In section 2 Allah says, Didn't I make the earth a comfortable place for you to sleep? Didn't I make the mountains, you know, والجبالة, and mountains is pegs that stay in place and set, set you down. And didn't I, didn't I make you into pairs, man and woman? Didn't I make your sleep a time where you can just be cut off from all of your concerns? It doesn't matter if somebody has cancer, or major debt, or stress, or fights, or trouble. When they're asleep, all their trouble disappears. They get cut. It's like Allah puts the pause button on your life. And then subat, this is subat actually, he cuts you off from everything. <laughs> he just temporary death for you. You know, you're dead to the world basically, and the world is dead to you when you're asleep. Then he says, He made the night into a clothing over you, and he made the day a means by which you can earn a living. And he made the sky above you, the seven above you that are very intense, and he put a brilliant lamp in there. All of these are things you can observe or know. This is the only section of the surah. By the way, let me quiz you. What section is this? Very good. This is the only section of the surah that does not require iman. Everything else in the surah requires iman. Because day of judgment, I haven't seen it. The, the people not being able to speak, the angels coming down, I haven't seen any of it. But have I seen the sky? Have I seen the earth? Have I seen the mountain? Have I seen you know, man and woman in pairs? Have I seen, no, do I know about sleep? I know these things. So this, this section does not require iman, this is the life as everybody experiences it. Now this is, this is all of life or is this one section of life? This is one piece of life. The believer knows life goes on, doesn't it? And if you understand what 1 and 3 and 5 and 7 were, 1 and 3 and 5 and 7 were all about judgment day, but judgment day is not where our life continues. Where does our life continue? It's after judgment day, hereafter. And in, in the hereafter, what happens? Either you end up in Jannah, or you end up in Jahannam. In this world right now, good people and bad people are together. In this world, we're all paired together. But after Yawm al-Fasl, the day of separation, the good and the bad cannot live in the same place anymore. The good will end up in Jannah, the bad will end up in Jahannam. Uh, you can guess what sections 4 and 6 are going to be. 4 is Jahannam, 6 is Jannah. 4 is Jahannam and 6 is Jannah. So 2 was the life in this world, 
and four and six are the two lives in the next world. That actually completes the entire picture. <laughs> but let me take you back. I mentioned to you there's sections one, three, five, seven. I mentioned to you that there's sections two, four, and six, and how they're all related to each other. But you know what's even wilder? Each section inside of itself has a symmetry. Each section, I'm not going to walk you through all of it because you'll go crazy. But I'll tell you some of it. I'll share some of it with you. If you look at the first section, which was, أَمَّا يَتَسَاءَلُونَ عَنِ النَّبَأِ الْعَظِيمِ أَلَّذِي هُمْ فِيهِ مُخْتَلِفُونَ كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ ثُمَّ كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ Even from a language point of view, it's perfectly balanced. There's two questions. عَمَّا 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 يَتَسَاءَلُونَ عَنِ النَّبَأِ الْعَظِيمِ عَنْ occurs twice. The answer occurs twice. كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ ثُمَّ كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ And the middle is أَلَّذِي هُمْ فِيهِ يَخْتَلِفُونَ There's a middle. There's two above it and two below it. And the two above it match and the two below it match. It's a perfect fit. Then when you get to the section of this world, that's one of my favorite sections in the surah. Actually, you know why? It's called istidlalul Qur'an. How does the Qur'an convince its audience of something they can't see? You see, at the end of the day, this is da'wah to those who don't believe in the akhirah. And the only thing in the surah that they can use to reach that conclusion is which section? Too. Everything else is asking, is showing them the conclusion. But what is the path to that conclusion? Now listen to this very carefully. Everything Allah mentioned in the second section was in pairs. Everything was in pairs. And even those pairs are symmetrical. Let me show you. The first pair Allah mentioned was, He made the earth flat, and He made the mountains on top of the earth. The earth has been paired with the mountains. Why is that important? Because the earth is vast, but what's the most prominent thing you see on the earth? Mountains. By the time this section comes to an end, Allah mentions the skies, and then the most prominent thing you see in the sky, وَجَعَلْنَا سِرَاجًا وَحَاجًا The earth and the mountains are at the beginning, the, the sky and the sun are at the end. So the, the style here is, you mention the entire thing, and mention the most visible thing on it. Then you mention the sky and you mention the most visible thing at the end. So there's a tanasub between the beginning and the end. Allah then said, He made you into pairs. He made who into pairs? Man and woman. Man and woman. And then at the, if you look at towards the end, He says, He made night and day. وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ لِبَاسًا وَجَعَلْنَا النَّهَارَ مَعَاشًا SubhanAllah. The, man, the relationship of a man and a woman, they work together and they complete each other just like what? The night and the day. Just like the night and the day. But there's only one thing. And by the way, this is the middle ayah of the section. There's only one thing that is not paired. On purpose. Allah, you notice everything Allah said so far was paired. Man was paired with woman. Earth was paired with mountain. Sky was paired with sun. Day was paired with night. There's only one thing that is not paired. وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ subata. That's in the middle. He made your sleep something that cuts you off. Remember I talked to you about sleep? But if you're going to talk about sleep, then what should you pair it with? Think about it. What is the pair of sleep? Waking up. Waking up. Man is compared with woman. Sleep must be compared with waking up. But there's no mention of istiqaf. There's no mention of waking up. But then you realize... As you're, if you're listening and you're pondering carefully over the ayat, wouldn't you come on the conclusion, come to re realize yourself that the logical pair of sleeping is what? Waking up. Now listen to this carefully. Then you'll understand the surah, the beauty of the surah. For the Muslims, when we go to sleep, it is actually a form of death. When we go to sleep, we say, Bismik Allahumma. Amutu wa ahya. Not anamu wa astaykiz. We say amutu wa ahya. In the name of Allah, I die and I wake up. And I, and I come back to life. When we wake up in the morning, the masnoon dua is Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana. Alhamdulillah to the one who woke us up after he had given us death. For us, sleep is like what? Death. And if sleep is like death, then waking up is like what? Being brought back from death. Isn't it? Because 
if you're being brought back to life, that means resurrection. Just like waking up from sleep is logical. It's logically paired. This life is logically paired with what? Waking up. Allah did not mention the pair because He wants the listener to arrive at that conclusion themselves. That you're going to wake up. And by the way, when you wake up, what day will it be? The day of judgment. The, 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 the day that keeps coming in the surah, every other section. He keeps reminding you of what's going to happen when you wake up. <laughs> Subhanallah, how remarkable, how like fascinating the organization of the Qur'an is. Every single surah like that. And this is, there's, a, there's a different kind of study, right? There's a study of when you study the ayat in order. First one to the second one to the third one to the fourth one. There's a beauty in that too. Like I'll share one of the beauties of that with you. The first thing Allah mentioned was the earth as mihad. You know what mihad comes from? It comes from mahad. Mahad means the holding of a mother. The softness of a mother. The earth is compared to a woman. Because it has a mahad. And then what did Allah pair the, the, the earth with? The mountain. The mountain is watid, awtad, something stable and held in place. Like what? The man, the softness of the woman and the firmness and the stability that who, who brings stability to the household? The man does. And that's why the very next ayah is just like the earth and the mountain, وَخَلَقْنَاكُمْ azwaja. He made you into pairs. SubhanAllah, even how the ayat flow from one to another. And in calling the earth a mahad, which means a place to sleep also. And the, the mountain, a tent. Autad is actually pegs. They don't use a peg unless you're going to put up a tent. This was actually something that the Arabs used to think about all the time, because they traveled all the time. Now when they travel, they don't look for a holiday inn sign back in the day. Or a Marriott, or a, you know. Where are they, where are they going to stop for rest? They say, ah, oh, time for a rest stop. Where I'm standing is the rest stop. I'm just going to take the tent off my back, lie down. And then what am I going to do in the morning? I'm going to roll it up and keep going, isn't it? Allah Azza wa Jal is using the language that the Arab understands as the language of a traveler. Because a traveler, his, the entire earth is his mahad. And wherever he needs to go to sleep, what is it? It says what did he, he puts the tent down. Why is that important? Allah is describing just like you travel and then you go to sleep and you roll up your tent in the morning and go, Allah will one day roll up this entire earth like a tent is rolled up. And this earth is like the journey of a night travel. It's nothing like, you know, you know, عَشِيَّةً أَوْ ضُحَاهَا That when they come in judgment day, they're going to think they just stayed one night. And they packed up and left the next morning. That's the imagery of the life of this world described in this beautiful, beautiful surah. So at, at the end of all of this, what I wanted to share with you is, the study of the Qur'an is a gift of Allah Azza wa Jal to this ummah. And that's a gift that will, it will never stop. Like the, we, the, the, the giants that came before us that studied this book and wrote the tafsir on the Qur'an, they have made their contribution and the generations that came after them built on their shoulders and the ones that came after them built on their shoulders and did more reflection and more study and a deeper look. And Allah Azza wa Jal, like Al-Hikmatu Dalatul Mu'min, you know, the wisdom is the, is the lost treasure of the believer. Now there are things about the study of the Qur'an that are becoming apparent to us that we can even show to the non-Muslims and anybody else and even they can visibly see and say, whoa, this is, this is something incredible. You know, one of the, I'll, I'll leave you with this. One of the first criticisms made of the Qur'an in Western civilization, you know, the, 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 the Catholic Church, the Vatican, ordained the study of the Qur'an over 500 years ago. They actually assigned a department in the Catholic Church at the Vatican. The specialization was going to be the study of the Qur'an. So they can criticize the Qur'an, so they're better equipped to preach the message of Christianity in the Muslim lands. Right? So they started studying Qur'an 500 years ago, and they've been studying it since. And what you study in Orientalist schools and all of this stuff, this is only an extension of what they started then. And one of the earliest criticisms you find of the Qur'an that they say they can use to dissuade the Muslims from Islam is they'll say that the Qur'an is wholly unorganized. It's entirely unorganized. And now we're in a position like never before to not only demonstrate the organization of the Qur'an to Muslims for our own benefit, but even show it to the non-Muslims. And to show that this book has an organization that the world has never seen in any book. 
No book before this book has the kind of organization that this has. Subhanallah. So inshallah ta'ala with that, with these thoughts, I will leave you. Do your own reading of Surah An-Naba for yourself, inshallah ta'ala, and identify where those sections were and ponder over their, their meanings. Barakallahu li walakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim. Wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil-ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.